What's the word, y'all? Hey, things are going crazy with the Pacers right now. I'm starting this video talking about them going rebuild, and I just got a notification saying TJ McConnell's going to miss the next couple months because he had an injury on his torn, a torn ligament in his hands. The Pacers got a lot going on, dog. Uh, they decided to go full rebuild according to Shams. They have trade talks centered around Karis LeVert and either DeMontis Sabonis or Miles Turner. And I'm putting a big emphasis on or because that, that makes a lot of sense to me. We're going to talk about that later. But the Pacers have made a decision. And we've been talking about this for the past couple months. That they needed to make a big decision. Because even though they have, if you look at their roster, you say, is that a good NBA player? You answer yes. And you won't answer no until you get to like player number 10. Right? They have so many consistent solid good players but for some reason it's never worked together or hasn't worked together so they had to shake some things up similar to what we said about the Portland Trailblazers yesterday the Indiana Pacers have been one of the pillars of consistency they've made the playoffs like eight out of the last nine years and then last year they thought the reason they didn't make the playoffs short in season and they had court coach Nate Borkman who was uh, basically throwing fist fights on the sideline and they bring in a guy like Rick Carlisle thinking that Rick Carlisle with his with his experience and him being one of the better coaches in the league will, will right the ship and obviously starting off 10 and 16 has not been what they wanted and they finally have made the decision to go rebuild. And I am happy for the Pacers fans, but I'm happy for the league because the timing of this, if there's any silver line in Pacers fans, the timing of this is perfect. Okay, perfect might be a little bit of a stretch, but I'm just saying the timing is good, right? Look at this. Look at everything. In the Eastern Conference, you have 12 teams that are still trying to compete to be good. And then the Pacers, again, you're going to rebuild. The Magic and the Pistons are rebuilding teams. There's at least 12 teams in this conference that are trying to get better, right? And in the Western Conference side, it's it's about 12 as well. Maybe even 13. Because the Pelicans aren't trying to be bad. They just don't have Zion right now. So there's so many teams out there that will be looking to add upgrades. And again, you have so many consistent, decent players that if you are looking to go for a rebuild, this is what it looks like they're doing, this is a good time because you have teams that are willing to probably part ways with some future assets because it seems like the league might be open this year, but next year and the year after that. But these trades are so very important. So very important. Because you have a guy like DeMontis Sabonis, who is an all-star caliber player this season, they took away some of his touches. Rick Carlisle has been trying to change the offense a little bit, so he hasn't looked as great as previous seasons, his previous all-star seasons, but everybody that's watching the Pacers, everybody that's in tune with the NBA knows that Tomat Sabonis is still an all-star caliber player. Um, but the or, let's talk about the or in that, because it says Tomat Sabonis or Miles Turner. I asked people on Twitter, we're going to get to some of the trades that y'all have divvied up yourself. It seems like more people are invested in Miles Turner because he is such a, a high quality role player slash starter and he might be easier to incorporate to a midseason team. DeMontis Sabonis is one of the players that you look at to be one of the focal points of the offense, but Miles Turner on the other end is a stretch five that defends the paint. It seems like every team across the league can use those type of services. So the or is very, very, um, very interesting. And I wonder... If, uh, if teams are starting to call the phone and they're getting good offers for both players, will they decide to make a decision to trade both? I don't really know. Karis LeVert is a big name in this one because Karis LeVert has not been good this season. Um, he's had a tough year or so of his life, uh, let alone the basketball side. So I don't want to fault him too much about what's going on in the court, but he hasn't really worked out. The weird, the really weird part is the two pieces of Rick Carlisle who signed here to try to be the help. And now he's about to be a coach of a rebuilding team. That don't seem like something Rick Carlisle wants to go through. We let, he left in a playoff team to get another team that he wants to elevate to a playoff team. But hey, I don't know. And then they extended Malcolm Brogdon who's at least there for the rest of the season, who's another player that could probably get you something decent. So a lot of these uh, articles by Shams, when they put out these reports, is a lot of filler. They let you know at the right at the report they're going towards a rebuild. Some things in here are actually interesting to me. TJ Warren, um, they, they asked TJ Warren what he wants to do. He said he wants to stay in Indianapolis, um, which makes sense. I mean, he hasn't played in a whole year. And honestly, I don't see teams knocking down the doors to try to get TJ Warren after not seeing him because he probably won't be Bubba Warren again, right? The second interesting thing to me is this says that team president Kevin Pritchard has tried to convince the owner Herb, Herb Simon, a rebuild was necessary, including in 2017. Kevin Pritchard has been trying to rebuild this team for four years now. And the owner was like, nah, we're okay with being the seventh seat. And that's literally what it says in here. He's okay with being the seventh seat because he want to keep butt butts in the seats. So in 2017, Kevin Pritchard went up to the owner and said, we need to rebuild. And he was like, no, we're going to get Derek Collison, Bogdanovich. We're going to get Corey Joseph. And I knew that the Pacers were dead last in attendance this season, but I didn't know it was as bad as what it was. They're getting about 13,000 people in the seats. That's not good. And that was all that Herb Simon needed 
um, to know that it was time for a rebuild because nobody wants to see a... I've said this before and people always take offense to it. They are a boring and mediocre team. You can't be both. If you're going to be boring, you have to be good. If you're going to be mediocre, you have to be fun to watch. You cannot be both. And they've been both for the last two seasons. So it is time for a rebuild. The fact that they might not trade both of these players and they already have Malcolm Brogdon in a coach like Ricard. This is... Y'all know we do these videos. This is not scripted. So I'm just, I'm just uh, thinking aloud. I don't know if they're wanting, they want to hit the full complete reset, right? Because they said, or if they wanted to hit full reset, both Sabonis and Turner have high value on the market. So if you wanted to hit full reset, you wanted to get a ton of first round picks, some young talent, it's about trading all that away, but they said, or, which means that that might be going towards a, a slight reset more than a full rebuild. But man, 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 whether it be Sabonis or Turner, whether it be Sabonis or Turner, those players can turn the tables of a team that is trying to compete right now for sure now i asked y'all on twitter for trades what i've learned over the years of asking y'all for trades that none of us should get a gm job because more likely than not a lot of the trades that we draw up as as nba fans are going to be bad um but i'm curious i haven't even looked at the replies you said so let's go over some trades and talk about some potential offers i'm gonna start off with a trade by my guy csb he is one of the pacers fans that i follow on twitter he's also an og in the youtube community when it comes to rebuild shout out to csb um, and he threw a trade that's Buddy Hield, Marvin Bagley in a top 10 protected first for DeMontis Sabonis and Jeremy Lamb. Uh, that's coming from a Pacer fan, which surprises to me that he, he valued Sabonis basically as lottery filler and one first round pick and a flyer on Bagley who has to get paid eventually. I hate this deal for the, if the Pacers put off this trade, I would be super annoyed if I was a Pacers fan. But CSB is a Pacers fan. And he sees this trade and he thinks, I like it. I, I don't know. You tell me. For the Kings, though? Yeah, if you can get Sabonis on the Kings for that type of package, do it 1,000% of the time. But I just don't think that's that's enough. Snowballer says, Turner for Malik Beasley and Josh Okoge. The Pacers get a guy that can be a leading scorer if the opportunity was there in Beasley. I don't know how truthful, truthful that is. And get a young defender, Nikogi. The Wolves get a big to pair alongside Cat and take the defensive load against perimeter defenders. I guess it says perimeter centers. Dyslexia. Um, this trade is bad. If I'm thinking about a reset or rebuild for a team, I'm thinking about young future assets. And though Malik Beasley and Josh Okogi aren't old NBA players, I just don't know what their ceilings hold enough for me to trade away Miles Turner, who's been the heart and soul of that team for the past couple of years. He's been the leader of that team for the past couple of years. Um, and this just doesn't feel like enough for me as far as rebuilds go. This trade coach comes from Cole. I always got to look at what people profile pictures is. He's a Celtics fan. Okay. Mason Plumlee, Vernon Carey Jr., James Booknight, and a first round pick from 2023 for Miles Turner. I don't know if this is a trade that pulls it off, but if, if the Charlotte Hornets are not blowing the phone of Kevin Pritchard up, they doing something wrong. Because I've always said, I think we said this for the last couple years, that they just need a good center with LaMelo Ball and the rest of that team, and they can elevate themselves exponentially. Is that is that how you pronounce that word? They will elevate themselves to the next degree. That, do I mean a contender? Probably not. But they've been able to be a solid team without a good center. And now if you could get a good center, if Miles Turner is available, the Hornets need to go all, not all in, they need to go in on him because they need a player like him. I've seen a lot of Bulls related things in these comment section. This one's from my guy, Corey. Shout out to him. Um, very good YouTube channel. Go check him out. And he says, the Bulls get Sabonis and Martin, and then the, the Bulls give up uh, Brown Jr., White, and Patrick Williams. And the contracts make sense. I forget that DeMont Sabonis is on such a bargain of a deal. And I keep seeing trades similar to this, revolving around similar to this, and I'm torn. And I'm torn on a trade like this. Um, because if the Pacers are going to rebuild, of course, of course they want young players. Patrick Williams is only 20 years old. He was the youngest player in the draft when he got drafted. And I think he showed just a fraction of what he could be, like a, a fourth of what he could be as an NBA player. Um, Kobe White is 21 years old, and I think he is a guy that can light it up, and if he was given the keys, he can he can go out there. I think he can be a player that can average 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 points eventually. But I don't know if that's me being a biased Bulls fan. Am I overvaluing my own players? And Because I, I think we do that as fans, right? I watch Patrick Williams every night for this rookie season, the first couple games before he got injured. I watch Kobe White every single game of his NBA career so far. So maybe I overvalue them just a little bit because those are my guys. Demond Sabon is an all-star caliber player. As a Bulls fan, Trading away, it's, it's a little bit scary trying to trade away our super young pieces. Our super young pieces because it's it like, 
really makes you buy into the now. And if the now doesn't work, which is like two years down the line, doesn't work, now you just got no young assets at all. I mean, we still have Ayo DeSumo, who's like the GOAT, right? But it's it's a bit weird. And I, I will worry about Demonte Sabonis and Vucevic as a front court. Um, <laughs> like really worry about that. But I, I, y'all let me know. I uh, Pacer fans, would you want Patrick Williams? Patrick Williams is so good or could be so good. I, yeah, I think that's me. me saying he's so good is overvaluing him right now. I think he could be so good. No shot at the Frosty, the real Frosty. This is this is not this is not about you. But these are the caliber of trades that I've been seeing in my mentions. Um, so you have Duncan Robinson, Gabe Vincent, Casey Opala, Omir Yurt Seven, and a first round pick from 2024. And they the Heat are getting back Turner and Chris Dorte. He tells you why the Heat would do this trade, but he doesn't tell you why the heck the Pacers would trade these two players for this collection of of like eh and a future pick. We gotta we gotta think about it from both sides, brothers. Let's 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 you try to be civil here. Young Simba says these are his four realistic trades to blow it up. If I'm not mistaken, Young Simba is a Pacers fan. He is. So this is another Pacer fan coming in with his his input, right? Derrick Jones Jr. in the first for TJ Warren. I'm telling you, the Bulls don't want TJ Warren. Um, no. One year left on his deal, and he hasn't played all season. I'm not trading a pick away for that. Absolutely not. Um, the next one is Bagley, Halliburton, two firsts, and Sabonis, for Sabonis. Now, I think this is a little bit too much. Um, two first-round picks and Reese. Because I, I don't even look at Marvin Bagley as an asset at the moment. He's more like roster filling a trade like this. I don't think this is very realistic. This will be a... A gold mine of a package getting two Kings picks and Reese for Sabonis. I don't know how realistic that is. Wiseman and Kaminga for Turner. Now, the Warriors one is one that I've seen a lot, a lot of different um, uh, ways to make the Warriors one work. And Miles Turner on the Warriors sounds disgusting, but I also seen some people have Sabonis end up on the Warriors. And the last one, not, not a terribly unrealistic trade. I mean, I guess it really. Depends on how much you value Karis LeVert and how much of what's going on right now do you see as um, real versus him just being in a slump. But the Mavericks are a team that's definitely looking for a secondary ball handler. And Karis LeVert has showed he's a secondary. It literally says right here, <laughs> secondary ball handler. That's hilarious. And you're giving up um, trading the contract of, of Dwight Powell. And I mean, you're giving up a future pick, but I don't know. I want to go back to this Warriors one and talk about the Warriors as a trade piece. Because the Warriors have assets. Um, I, I think the Warriors have done a great job. And this is one of the things that I was questioning coming into the season, if you remember early on. How are they going to be able to balance the super young pieces that they have in Wiseman, Kaminga, Moody, and, and and Jordan Poole? How will they be able to balance all of that while still being contenders? Obviously, they've done a damn good job. Basically, Wiseman hasn't played. Kaminga plays spot minutes every once in a while. Moses, Moses, I almost said Moses Malone. Moses Moody has played a small amount of minutes. Basically, what they're saying is, we're going to try to develop these players on the backside and still let Steph Curry do a stake, right? And it's been working out. But if they really wanted to go all in, they could use these pieces to get a Turner or a Sabonis. And I've seen people talk about Sabonis on the Warriors. Like, oh, how does that fit? It would. You talking about another playmaking dude? I know the defense might suffer a little bit, but they have the best defense in the league with Kevon Looney and, and and Draymond Green. They got the defensive player of the year so far this season, and Draymond Green. I think they'd be able to mask over some of Sabonis' defensive uh, liabilities, right? And that's not a shot at Kevon Looney. He's a good defender. Um, but Sabonis on this team adds a whole different element that they've never really had in this organization, um, at least in the Steph Curry years, as a guy, I guess David Lee kind of works, as a guy that's back to the basket that can also be a playmaker. Now, you might have to reformulate your entire offense, so maybe that's not a good thing to do. But if you're talking about a team that has an asset pool that is a championship-caliber team that may want to level up, the Warriors are the perfect case for this. It's just a matter of whether or not Bob Myers looks at James Wiseman and think that he can be a player that can play with Steph Curry. Because through the first X amount of games of his NBA career, he hasn't been able to do that. But the Warriors are a scary team because they have so many of these younger assets and they still got picks and they wouldn't even have to trade Wiggins to make some things work because Wiggins had always been, when they were thinking about star players to put on the Warriors, Wiggins had been a salary filler, salary filler, salary filler, but a guy like Miles Turner and a guy like DeMond Sabonis are making no money. They making pennies on the dollar based on what they can actually bring. So you don't even need to throw in Wiggins. That's a scary ass team. Bro, looking at this, I can talk about trades all day day i'm seeing some raptors fans trying to get into the mix which i like they're trying to give miles turner because uh their center which is precious to you one of their centers 
is shooting like 30% from the field as a center or something something similar to that. So I understand wanting to get another center. But more likely than not, um, all of the trades that we mentioned today, and I got 500 replies to this tweet, 99% of them are bad trades, you know? But it's always fun to like just go to the trade machine and try to make something work. Um, Pacers fans, tell me how you feel in the comment section. I'm going to continue to look through these because people are making some very interesting points and interesting not always being a positive word. Uh, but either way, Pacers hit the reset button. Perfect timing. They got to make the right trades and it'll work. As always, y'all, I need y'all to continue to enjoy basketball and I'll see y'all tomorrow.